Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone. Welcome. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth, and I'm with my co-host, Don Diviniste. Welcome Aloha, to the show, Don. <laughs> Aloha. Hakahiaka. That means good morning in Hawaiian. Good morning in Hawaiian. Oh, it's, yeah, it's morning here. It's yeah. not here. So how how um, how do you say that again? Aloha kakahiaka. It's all uh, one word. Aloha kakahiaka. Kiaka. Kiaka. Yep. Very nice. Yeah, it's nine o'clock there. It's twelve PST Pacific time here. And then it's three o'clock somewhere else, and who knows whatever else times it, it, it is around the world. But you know, here we are in this now moment, uh, continuing the story of how to survive the murder of a loved one, and that is what happened to you six years ago when your mother was murdered. And today we're we're this is actually our third show today that we um, where we're we're trying to capture all the different things that took place with this horrific event that took place in your life that changed everything for you changed yes. everything game changer so last show um you know we 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 talked about um one of the things that we wanted to bring up now is talking about your husband because we really haven't focused on him at all we we um we want to find out you know what happened because you got counseling you got counseling, and um, you just you just even just finished counseling. When was that? Probably like a month or so ago. In May. Maybe in May. So yes. you just finished counseling, and and this has been six years ago. And so, and then you you had mentioned that your husband he didn't receive counseling. He wasn't part of that uh, program that um, was part of the community um program that was being rolled out um right california state yeah california state yeah, immediate family members only and yeah it's, and I, I mean yeah immediate family members even though he was your husband uh would have been nice if he would have well yeah and he was yeah he was one of the caretakers well it, he ended up being yes yes mm-hmm. but yeah he was close he was close with my mom and, and bob and yeah used to help him with the sailboat and he was a part of their lives. And, um, so, you know, it was a big shock, but I, what I can see is that everybody is built differently. You know, he has a military background. He was in coast guard for 12 years. He, you know, he's built, he, he's built to handle things differently than, than, than me. You know, I, some people can handle emergency situations, you know, male, female, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're built for that, but um, so yeah, he was able to handle things better. Um, could he have, yeah, benefited from counseling for sure? Yes. Um, did I support him in doing that? Sure, you know, and and he did do a, a few sessions, but um, but yeah, even. Because, you know, Bob, my stepdad, he was in the hospital. He was in ICU for a month. And then he got sent to a rehab center for two more months. So it was, you know, three months going to, you know, just the facilities. But then the bad part was the the day that um, <laughs> it was like they, they said, okay, well, Bob gets to go home now. <laughs> it's like okay, now what does that mean? Oh, well, we're going to show you how to shower him. And that was like a, you know, 10 minute training and then a 10 minute training on how to do the feeding tube. And it was like insta, insta nurse. 
and and so just you know think about the mental aspect of that and 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 like just stepping into a new role immediately and um so i you know i was i was all in i was ready to do whatever was necessary and um you know bob he wanted he wanted to be in his house he wanted to be in his house with his dogs, with his memories, with his stuff. It was really important. And so we actually moved out of our our house and in with him to take care of him. And so we moved <laughs> going from a three bedroom house to a one one bedroom, you know, and, and integrating. And just so all this change was happening. And um, I remember that first week, you know, when Bob was home. And Keith was like, "No, Don, you're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be the one to stay home and do this. No, I'm built for this. I have the military background. I am great with scheduling. I am, you know, follow through, and and, and I'm built for this. So, you know, physically, you know, to be able to help lift him, and you know, so." Uh, yeah, because he was wheelchair bound. So, um, and he did require, you know, full full care. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I lasted a week helping, and then and then it was my job to go back to work. So imagine that, <laughs> like, imagine all this trauma, and then and then me going back to my corporate job. And at the time, you know, I was in charge of all the. The, the graphic communications of 19 grocery stores and not just that, but just, you know, the website and the apps and the, you know, auction site and, oh my gosh, there there's, yeah, all their advertising. It was, it was a big, big responsibility job. And, and I, I did last until May the next year. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty good, but but uh, yeah, Keith, he he got to <laughs> he got to dive into that care caregiving role, and um, we took we did take some classes. Um, <clears throat> Shasta <clears throat> Shasta County um, offered some you know free classes, and and there were others. But you know, one of the things is they set up to give you um, to send food home, you know, for the food, feeding tube. Well, the first <laughs> I look at the ingredients, and the first thing on the on the Nestle, you know, food is high fructose corn syrup, and I'm like, no, that is not how you heal. Oh my gosh! So it was also like me integrating my knowledge of the of the you know vitality foods and superfoods, and then making our own you know high nutrition things for the the feeding tube and. That was just amazing to see, oh my gosh, like no wonder people are having a hard time, you know, just re with recovery. It, it's, it's not optimal. And so really it's, it's a matter of kind of being a rebel and, and, and looking at things and going, you know, I'm not going to do it that way. I, I know there's a better, better option here. Well, once you know, once you know what high fr fructose corn syrup can do to you and how bad it is for you, you, uh, you obviously not in good conscience. It's like not with your good conscience. Can you actually give this to a person that is, is on a feeding frail. tube? Yeah. Oh my frail. God. And you, you know, it's like, you know, not with a good heart and mind. Can you actually uh, just pretend like you don't know this? Right. Yeah. My it's, God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, surprising. Yeah. So, so you guys came up with your own nutritional concoction then of what oh. to put into the fe oh, feeding yeah. tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. the protein powder and all the superfoods and spirulina and you know all that. Yeah. You know, fresh. All the high vibe and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so you know, Bob, you know he he did. He survived another two years, and and that was good. But people saw him decline and they saw well they saw a difference in him and they didn't realize like we were taking him to the the brain doctor and and getting him tested and 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 they worked with him um 
he, you know, from the outside, you don't, you don't see mental, you know, disability. It's, it's really difficult. Yeah. You yeah. think, you see someone and you think that they're the same person and, you know, with, with lo- lack of blood or loss of blood, and that means loss of oxygen to the brain, it definitely has an impact on the brain. And, and then he was limited with his ability to speak. So, you know, here he is trying to speak and people are, you know, coming to visit and, and, it, and it's hard to understand that he's not the same person and, and he has this, you know, limited ability to speak. And so there, it, yeah, it was, it was really difficult. <laughs> what was your um, what was your take again on why why do you think that Bob came back? Um, because what he came back well to specifically at, mm-hmm. looking at the big big picture mm-hmm. you know, the big giant picture is that yeah he came back to to save me really he came mm-hmm. back to to give me purpose without him I know I would have crashed and burned I mean in a very big depression and I don't know if I really would have pulled out of it I I mean I just I don't know it's it's, yeah, it's hard it's, to say it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah it's just yeah yeah so you, know, you know for me to be here in Hawaii that's part of my healing path is you know I am trying to live heaven on earth and and this was my my heart space in when you know when I was 14 when I first came here I knew I never wanted to leave I cried the whole way home and you know I just knew at some point I would come back here it's like the place you know that finding the place that you feel the best in the world and um that's what this place is is definitely how, um, how long ago have, did you move to Kauai um I I came here four years ago with the idea, that's when Neil Donald Walsh said, hey, just go write a book. You know, you're going to help a lot of people by, by sharing this information. And so I, it was a choice of either, oh, there's a life coaching program that I can go and get trained and do that, or I can go to Hawaii and I can write a book. So I, I opted for Hawaii, write a book. And, and it's funny how we have these plans in life and then they, <laughs> <laughs> and then divine shows up and <laughs> integrates something totally different. Well, what happened was I came here, I, I, I locked in with the Airbnb for three months thinking that that would be a good amount of time to just to write a book. And I didn't get a rental car because I'm just thinking I'm just going to have my desk and my computer and just write. And I just, I stayed up in Princeville, you know, you can walk around and and I get there, and they had just gotten a new, adopted a new, like, adolescent, you know, greyhound um, whippet dog. The renters. <laughs> and this dog was, like, crazy dog. <laughs> crazy <laughs> barking dog, peeing all over the place dog. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, how no do I quiet, get out of No here? peace and quiet. No <laughs> peace and quiet. Yeah. And so, but I, I did meet, um, Allie and Allie has been this huge ally in my life ever since then. And she actually, what I got out of the trip was I got to learn (laughs) a whole nother realm of healing and nutrition and, um, yeah, she just took me all over the island. So that was my beginning in Hawaii. So that and that was four years ago. So basically, um, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about you writing that book. But we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be right back on the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. We'll be right back. My name's Bob Skeel. I'm 91 years old, and I want to take a few minutes now to share with you the important role, actually the critical role, Cornelia has played in my life. I say critical because I'm not sure I'd be alive at all to the many possibilities that make up our human experience at my age, if not for her. I could have easily become another dead man walking, only half conscious, stumbling through my remaining years, if it hadn't been for Cornelia. 
Six years ago, I lost my wife to Alzheimer's. We've been married for 61 years. I never thought I'd be a widower, but there I was, suddenly lost and alone, but with the good sense to set a working goal for myself. I was going to spend the rest of my life committed to unconditional love, whatever that meant and wherever that took me. A year or so later, Cornea came along, helping me over several years to focus that unconditional love where it had never been focused before, on me. My whole life, my entire being had been focused on love of neighbor, and I had derived great satisfaction from that. But in the process, I had ignored the second part. I love your neighbor as yourself. Now it was time to direct that love inward. I didn't see that right away, but Cornelia did, and she drew me there. She drew me actually to God. Through many conversations over coffee and after numerous, sometimes tearful, agonizing discussions, Cornelia was able to lead me kicking and screaming to within where I needed to be. It was there finally that I was able to re-identify myself. It was in bringing unconditional love to myself that I now saw myself in a new light, a fully conscious, worthy human being capable of healing, loving, and creating in my own right all these gifts of the evolutionary process. I'm a new man now, younger as I get older. I don't move as fast as I once did, of course, but my smile is quicker and I engage the heart and mind of others more readily. I would likely not be at such a wonderful stage in my life if not for Kania. I owe my new life to her, a wonderful friend and a constant source of inspiration. Thank you, Cornelia. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and we're talking with Don Diviniste on how she survived the murder of her loved one, and which was her mother. And Don is living in Hawaii now, in Kauai. And uh, four years ago, she went to Kauai, and she was smitten with a dog named Allie. No, and that's not a dog. No, it's not a dog. <laughs> no, no. Oh. <laughs> Not a dog. No, Ellie's my savior. <laughs> she was the one. No, she was she was staying in the same house. Oh, <laughs> and she had the rental car. No, she and she taught me how to oh. how to prep wonderful you know foods and and oh. take them to the beach and how to live <laughs> and do lots of self love. So yeah, no, Ellie's not the dog. <laughs> the dog just like. A, <laughs> <laughs> nuisance. Oh, okay. The dog was the one that was saying, basically saying, you need to get out of the house. Exactly. Like, don't sit in front of the computer anymore. You've done that all your life. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You needed to get out and get into nature. Yeah. And play around in Kauai's heartbeat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, but prior to you going to Kauai, you were back, you're back in California with your husband and now Bob's home and you all are all of a sudden became caretakers and, you know, discovered that you went back to work, you're going back to work. And now, uh, because originally we were, we began talking what kind of coaching or counseling that your husband receive and what kind of toll did that have on him emotionally and physically and then what, what did that do to oh your gosh. marriage? I mean, what a contrast there. I mean, he's, he's a go-getter. He's a, you know, what, type A personality, you know, Alpha. of service, you know, hands-on, mechanic all his life, you know, journeyman plumber. He's used to, you know, helping people in the neighborhood or, you know, friends, family, whatever it is, you know, building fences, whatever it is, you know, somebody has an issue and he's there to help them in the physical, you know, real physical. And, and here, you know, caregiving, yeah, it's physical, but it's also like sitting around the house and like <laughs> watching someone watch TV. And it's like, oh my gosh, you, you can lose yourself. And, and 
it really did take a toll on him. I mean, and, and it was a perfect example of how um, emotions can definitely uh, um, create dis-ease in the body. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always on that, in the etheric, things begin, the thoughts, and then the emotions, and it ke keeps getting denser, and then, and then this dis-ease happens in our body. And, and what it turned out to be, um, when, when Bob died in um, 2014, it, it, um, it showed up for Keith that he was disabled. I mean, he just collapsed after that. He had sciatica so bad he could not walk. He could he could crawl through the house. He could barely, you know, barely go to the bathroom. Barely, I mean, it was awful. I, pain scale ten. Oh, that's and, terrible. And you know, all he wanted was like ibuprofen and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, no, yeah. I know. I mean, you know, being the natural, <laughs> natural you know, health practitioner, um, holistic health coach, I, I just knew that's not, you know, optimal. But it was a great, again, a great, you know, testimony, validation of how good, um, you know, the, well, doTERRA essential oils are and that, you know, you can use those and, you know, there's a special combination that 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 helps support situations like that and support the body to go from you know pain 10 down to I, I just I, I timed it you know okay what's your pain you know every 15 minutes it dropped three I was like oh my god okay so you know that works right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but it definitely so it disabled disabled him but also really like suppressed I would say suppressed his soul, you know, the, the two years, two and a half years of, of, of caregiving, it really suppressed his soul in a big way that, um, he was just, yeah, really unhappy. It, it was really hard, you know, for us to be around each other. Um, he, yeah, had a lot of hostility and resentment and, and, and bitterness and, and it was all, you know, just, there being built up, built up. And, and finally I said, you know, maybe, maybe you need to go live in your, in our old house, you know, by yourself and, and just let's give each other some space. And, um, and we did, and it was, it was, well, it was needed. It was needed. I mean, I still, was Bob still alive at that time when he, when he moved over? No. He was already gone. Bob was already gone. Yeah. And so yeah, it was like three months later when that happened. Yeah. And so basically being in the house for two years, being a caretaker and a caregiver, um, you know, not, not, not being out there in the world, not socializing and doing things 24 seven, pretty much caretaking. And then having to not really having processed all of the emotions around the murder. I mean, I can only imagine, you know, especially for men, because men process emotions differently than women do. And um, I get this a lot with working with men with, um, you know, them not them not being able to articulate their feelings and that that it's really OK to cry and that it's really OK to release and that it's really OK to, to you know, um, emotionally rage because they've never had that safe space to be that way before. So I can only imagine that your husband, if he didn't get any coaching, didn't get any counseling, didn't get any um, support on with what to do with the emotional processing, then um, he was just holding all that energy in. And then I think later on it turned into resentment. Yeah. Well, I know like we're, we're at the end of uh, our divorce. I mean, we're, you know, the papers have been signed a while ago. And so, you know, I don't even know if I should be calling in my husband because he's, you know, we've, we've been apart from each other for three years now. But you guys are good friends now, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And well, I mean, yeah, I always will honor and, and love him. You know, he, I mean, gosh, what a, 
huge, you know, deep, deep friendship to be able to go through some, you know, actually it wasn't even this. I mean, gosh, we've been through other really heavy things together, you know, in the past as well. So, I mean, yeah, my book, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's not just about this. It's about, you know, gosh, um, oh, man, okay, I don't know. I, I, my mind there's, is... Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that, that um, a lot of trauma, basically, Don, of what you're talking about that you've had to overcome. Yes. Uh, that, that you've had to deal with. And the fact that you are today, uh, you know, living your life. In, in, from a place of um, expressing your joy, from a place of expressing your bliss, from, from healing and recovering, from overcoming so many things. This is a testimony to uh, the spiritual work that you've done and the holistic therapies that are available for all of us to use. And that uh, basically, if you can do it, other people can do it too. And I think that's yeah, what your message is. It's a commitment to self-love. Mm-hmm. It's like re recapturing like recreating your identity i am not you know my past yes my past makes me you know who i am today it empowers me and and i can gain strength from all these trials and tribulations but you know really this this whole journey is about you know choosing this new identity and that's, I mean, I can see, like, you know, even my bio. I mean, yeah, there's a ton of things listed. I've done a lot of things, but is it really who I am? I'm still, <laughs> I'm still evolving. I'm still trying to figure it out. Absolutely. Like, focus on most. Yeah, it's a constant reinventing. It's a constant giving birth to the new self and letting go of the old self, right? It's a continuous cycle of rebirthing the self and finding out and discovering who you are now. We're going to take another break. We'll be right back with Don Diviniste. <laughs> Hi, my name is Janet Hickox, and I want to tell you a little story about a story and how my friend Cornelia Stephanie helped me through to the other end of that story. I have gone from the dark of a story I was telling myself that wasn't true to the light of optimism to see my way out of where I was and to where I want to go. And it all started with uh, her scheduling a session for me to help me reclaim my money or my financial empowerment. Up until that point, I had been telling the story that my business was dying, that my business was not successful anymore. And the more I tried to figure out what was going on, the worse I felt about it. And when I had to get ready to do the session with Cornelia, she asked me to go look at the numbers and where I was uh, through the year to date. And then also to come prepared with a number that I wanted to uh, raise my income to. Well, I was quite comfortable with that part, right? I knew where I wanted to be. Uh, what I wasn't comfortable with doing is going and looking up those numbers, but I made myself do it. Even though I tried to backpedal my way out of the session, um, she didn't know that, but I was going to try to get myself out of the session. And I looked up those numbers and it was incredible that I discovered through that process that my business wasn't dying. In fact, I was doing 12% better than I had the year before. So I was shocked. I was shocked literally at the power of the story that I had been telling for months. But more than that, I was shocked that I had allowed myself to get there. And uh, later in that day when I had my session with Cornelia, she pointed out some very obvious things like, how are you going to get where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go? How are you going to get there if you don't have the goals written out, if you don't have it uh, set up so that you know where you are and where you're going to go? totally makes sense, right? If I, and I had been in business, uh, somebody else's business as a sales manager for years, and I, I was a national sales manager. <laughs> I had awards for sales management. I had business awards because of numbers. And yet when it came to doing my own business, I totally forgot all that I'd ever learned. So by the time Cornelia working with me in just 
one session got me to look deeper at the numbers and where did I want to go and actually, you know, claiming where I wanted to go. Um, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope like you can't believe. It was like everything shifted for me. And I am so looking forward to our continued sessions to see how far I can really push myself to get where, I, where I've only dreamed of being, where I've never taken the dream and actually brought it into concrete existence. So thank you, Cornelia, for the work that you're doing out there. I appreciate it, and I can't wait to see where I go from here. We're back with Don Diviniste, and we were talking before we went to break about how Don's marriage um, took a turn and took a toll on um, after this whole event. Everything shifted and everything changed. And so they, Don and her husband actually got a divorce, and yet they're still really good friends. And so how, how, how long did it happen? How long after... Um, Bob passed away and then your husband ended up moving back over to your old house. And is that, was that the progression of what it took to actually, um, you know, start the separation between the two of you? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was only a few months that, that that happened. And then, yeah, I think it was really, you know, essential, like, of, of each of us like finding who we are like mm -hmm. after something like that like I know so I've actually tried to get back together and he's really committed to himself and it just says that says a lot that we were really good together but also a part, <clears throat> it, it strengthens you in a whole new way. Mm -hmm. And he sees for himself that he, he needs that at this point in his life. And of course, I have to respect that. But do I love him? Of course. <laughs> Am I attracted to him? Of course. You know, it's, but I also, I, I, I really honor you know, who, who he is and, and what he's doing and, and why, why he's doing it. So, um, yeah, that's a tough one, boy. How long were you married to him? Well, hang on. So for me, what I, what I realized recently is in a relationship, what do I, what do I cherish the most? And it's loyalty and integrity. Mm -hmm. And when you have something like that, loyalty and integrity, a, a really strong relationship, yeah, that's really hard to let go. It is. But <clears throat> we were high school sweethearts. Wow. We were high school sweethearts, and we, we went out for three years in high school, and we were one of those, you know, it couples and, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. We were one of those couples that, you know, people knew that we were together, and, um, and then we had an 18-year gap. And so it was just, it was from a dream that I reconnected with him. And um, I mentioned it to my grandma at the time and said, you know, I had this dream about my first boyfriend, my first love. And she said, oh, that's funny. He's been on, I, I, yeah, he's been on my mind for the past three days. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Are you serious? She's like, yeah. So it prompted me to call him just to see what, how his life has been. You know, it had been, you know, 18 years and I was 35 at the time. And, and it was like, I get, I call, this is a whole nother radio show, <laughs> just so you know, but I call and this woman answers and I knew he was married and he had kids and he was happy. And I just oh wanted God. to, just, you know, talk to him like, you know, uh-huh. And so this, you know, the woman answers and I say, you know, can I talk to Keith? And, and she goes, well, he, he doesn't live here anymore. And I oh. said, oh, uh, you know, almost, okay, bye, you know. But I didn't. I said, oh, uh, well, uh, this is Dawn. I'm an old high school friend. <laughs> She's like, 
Dawn, the Dawn, I could never live up to you. And I was just oh. like, what? Oh. What? 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 Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I was living in Pennsylvania at the time. So, I mean, like I said, this is a whole nother radio show. But <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. So then, yeah, the, so, who yeah knows their, was... their marriage didn't make it because of uh, feelings that he had towards you. Oh man. Oh my so, gosh. There is history. Yes. Yeah. And so I just think it's beautiful that you, um, that you love your husband and that you are, uh, you know, that you're still attracted to him and that, you know, do I love him? Am I still attracted to him and the loyalty and then the integrity? Um, you still have that. It's not like you lost that. You still yeah. have that because you guys are friends. And yeah. so it's awesome. And I think it's wonderful what he's doing that he is, um, uh, committed. yeah. Committed so committed to to, yeah. yeah. I, I just, I just find that. So that's so, that's, that's so masculine and that's so beautiful to be able to really, uh, do that. That's very yeah. confident and very attractive because that's what he needs as a soul right. to have this time to himself. So he's, he's, he's not in a relationship right now with anyone or no, that would make me sick. <laughs> See, we get all these triggers, you know, yeah. and here I am trying to meet people and, oh yeah. man, <laughs> yeah. that's like, it's, it's, it's just like, how does that even happen? How do two people ever come together? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's doing well today. Um, even though he, he didn't receive the, um, the healing, the kind of help that you got. How is well, he yeah, doing with everything he, today? So he got his dream job two years ago mm. and oh. so, you know, so he, he had been a journeyman plumber and so uh -huh. he really wanted to work for a company. And when this possibility came up two years ago, um, he applied to be on the engineering team of a hospital in town and you know, it's an inside job, but yet he gets to use all his skills and, um, <clears throat> So yeah, he got that job and he just That's had his, you know, just this week he, he had his two, two year anniversary. So he gets to help people in many, many ways in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's very fulfilling for him and good for uh, him. Just, yeah. Congratulations yeah. to yeah. him. Yeah. 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 It's just keep blessing him and sending yeah. good love and juju his way yeah. and that he continues yes. on yes. his yeah. journey and, and that he's healing and recovering from this whole thing and, you know, making sense of his life as he's rebooting himself also. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but there were other, there were other things that happened with this story. And, um, I remember you were talking about how, um, the community, um, <laughs> the people, the neighbors, something about the neighbors that. Well, gosh. Okay. So yeah, community is great at banding together and helping. I mean, we had, you know, deliveries and food and, you know, it was very blessed, but, and there were, there were people that showed up and not many, but you know, it was a real gift for the few that did show up at the hospital, you know, maybe, a, maybe six, four, you know, in the end, it was a couple people that were really there for us. But then it's funny how there, you know, rumors begin. Mm. Rumors begin from people that don't know what's going on. They speculate. Maybe they just need something to talk about. I don't know. But it's really, really hard when, you know, they're just, they're not true. They're not true and they're being spread and it is a disease that spreads. And we got um, surprised <clears throat> the um, senior protective services showed up at the house and somebody had called and, and complained and thought we were killing him, that we were killing Bob. <laughs> You're killing, killing Bob. Bob. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you <laughs> kidding me? Nestle wanted to, uh, maybe I shouldn't say that, but you know. <laughs> Right. The system was trying to kill him, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You know, this food and right. you know, they don't, I, <laughs> high fructose corn syrup wants yeah, to. Right. This up. high fructose corn syrup, you know? Oh my yeah. gosh. 
<clears throat> yeah. So who do you think, who do you think, um, I mean, does it matter? Somebody called some, somebody from the community, somebody that was just, um, well, his, I mean, his friends, you know, the friends that knew him all of a sudden he's, he's changed. And then maybe it's, oh. you know, friends that don't see him, you know, a lot. And, and then they see this decline and they see this weight loss, even though he's going to the doctor, getting checked and, you know, like he's getting a lot of care, but when, when somebody sees that, even a neighbor sees that, you know, yeah, they're going to make up stories, but come on, everybody, we got to control our minds. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very nice. I mean, it's really actually, it's, it's awful to, to be on the other side of it. And, um, cause at that point, you know, senior protective services, they, they just barge in the house whenever they want. And, and, you know, it, it, you know, we had um, a couple other, you know, caregivers that, you know, helped so that Keith wasn't on, you know, the, the 100% of the time. Um, we actually hired people on our own um, because even that, even the, the red tape of, you know, the insurance and all that stuff, it, it was easier to hire, um, you know, private individuals to assist as backup. Um, yeah. And... Um, so the the authority the they they were they were coming in and they were um and how long how long did that go on? I want you to think about that. We're going to take the last break and we'll be right back with the Cornelia Stephanie show. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now and even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth after working with her for many years I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach uh, coaching program and it has absolutely been an amazing process I now am a certified empowerment coach and I got certified through her program and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. So Adult Protective Services came in and they, they were called by some of Bob's friends, which created another huge burden on you guys, on, on you and your husband. Well, yeah, you I mean, it's not like they called and scheduled an appointment. No, <laughs> they would just show up randomly and, and, and say, no, we're... we're or to come inside and work to come in and check conditions and 
you know, I mean, of course, all the conditions were wonderful, but it, it was a huge stressor. And well, mainly knowing that people out there thought we were doing something to harm, like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, that's the antithesis. I mean, it's just this, you know, complete opposite of what is going on. And then for what we've endured. Yeah. No, you know what it was? It was a complete projection. It was a complete projection of their own, of their own beliefs onto the situation that, um, because it was exactly the opposite of what was going on. And it was a complete projection and they had nothing that they had to prove that this was actually happening. So, you oh, know what I mean? I see him getting, you know, you know, losing weight and stuff like that. So maybe in their eyes that, that, that was proof. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like you said, we were in the break, we were talking that Bob lived another six months through that, that time yeah. period, but he had gotten to the point where he was just really um, already making his journey uh, to transition to his next destination. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you yeah. can only watch so many war movies over and over again. You know, I, I think he was running out of movies to watch. It, it just got bored. It was <laughs> boring. He did. He, gosh, he lost his sailboat. He lost, I mean, you know, he was a sailor. He was the captain. He, you know, had his big truck. He lost that. He, he, you know, he, he couldn't drive. He couldn't, you know, have sex. He, you know, of course, you know, it just, ah. Uh. Yeah, he didn't have quality of life. He didn't have quality of life. And so um, it was just, what was that experience like? Because we talked about this before, Don, um, that because uh, Bob was a dictator and then he turned, you know, he, he, he completely turned into such a humble uh, place. Everything shifted. And now, you know, you were able to, you know, provide care for him in such a humble space, right? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was full of gratitude. He was, he was the sweetest. Oh, I, you know, it makes, it makes me smile thinking back on, on who I got to see him as afterwards, because it was, it was innocence. It was, it was still, it was still truth like no matter what, but it was, and he saw me, I, he got to see me at my core. He got to see us show up for him in a way that he never imagined would be possible in his life. That's huge. There was huge gratitude and camaraderie between all of us at the end you know, during that whole experience. I mean, it, it just, that was like the, you know, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. So even though, you know, we had the hardships of the, you know, protective services showing up and stuff. I mean, we, there was still, you know, a strong bond and, but, you know, he, he wanted to, he wanted to call the news outlets and, you know, have the, all the news crews show up on the on our doorstep. And I'm like, no. Did he really? Because he was trying to protect you. Well, he um, because he was he, he was, was kind of the whole event. Like he he just oh. wanted the publicity and and you know because he wanted justice. He wanted oh, he wanted he justice. Was, well, because all the anger and the yeah. You know, curse. I mean he. He wanted to rake somebody over the coals and then have them minced up, you know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So how, how, how did, how did... But, you know, okay, wait, because mm -hmm. going back to that, like he wanted the news crews to show up, but I was the protector. So, ah. you know, talking about neighbors protecting, you know, calling in protective services. Well, no, I was the protector of him, of, you know, making sure that, um, you know, that the news crews weren't showing up and, and then for what? I mean, he could barely talk. I mean, so if they had shown up, then it would be it just, yeah, he, he, could, he could write. He, he had people help him, you know, type. And, um, but, yeah, it was, 
I was definitely a protector for him. And as well, he was for us. Yeah. Well, you know what I love? I love the fact that you all had, the three of you, you, Bob, and your husband, had that healing took place towards the end with him transitioning. Oh, and, and my brother. Oh, and my your God. brother. Brother, yeah. And, yeah. It, it's just, we've had, we've all had such a, a rough history with him. <laughs> It's a miracle <laughs> that it turned out the way it did, really, for all of us to be able to show up and for all of that healing to occur within the family, to really show up for each other when, when it's needed most, it is the miracle, really. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is, that your, is that your takeaway from that whole thing, um, that to be able to show it's up one for of each the other. Ones. It's one of the big, huge ones. Yeah. And isn't that, isn't that, isn't that part of our humanity that we can really show up for each other? Isn't that what living heaven on earth is all about? Being able to show up for each other in the end, no matter what, and that yes. we can put our differences aside and we can really show up. Right. Yes. I'm getting up, chills. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. and we can show up from our heart and, um, do, you know, what needs to be done to love each other to take care of each other, to nurture each other, to feed the children and, and support each other, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And now, so Shasta County, you know, well, you don't know, I don't know. Okay, Shasta County, big fires in Redding. And yeah, yeah. Gosh, their house is two blocks away from the fire line. I mean, it's been a stressful week um, for me for everybody there and huh? everybody's banding together my brother's there he's been helping out he and he's what he's seeing is the best and people all coming together and yeah now they're doing the roadside barbecues and you know the you know the donations and it's just the aloha spirit is definitely out and yeah yeah and, and it's amazing so so that's huge that is huge. And we have about a minute and a half, Don, right. before we close out the show today. So um, let's. what would you like to say to wrap up this, this segment of uh, your incredible story? Yeah. Well, there's, just, there's a lot to be shared, as you can see. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful for, for all of it, all the, all the lessons. Um, I mean, even, you know, the hardest ones they've made me stronger and now I get to share somebody else needs that strength and and I you know I'm just grateful for for meeting you Cornelia and you know the cosmic alignment that happened there and you know here we are sharing goodness and and I just I yeah I I, I hope this um helps people out there yeah and what I want to see is I want to see this this story get picked up and, and a movie made out of it so it can really help a lot of people. And I just want to uh, commend you for what an incredible um, healer you are. Uh, and really, you can help. You are helping a lot of people. Thank so you. thank you so much, Don DeBeniste. Thank you for tuning in and living heaven on earth together with you. Okay, we'll see you next time. Namaste. Namaste. DeBeniste. <laughs>